Hey everybody, I'm April Molina and today I'm inviting you in to sit in on one of my voice lessons. Okay, so we are here in a voice lesson today with my dear student and friend, <laughs> Tiana. Hello. Who is a self-proclaimed beginner who has a beautiful voice and is just recovering from being sick. So all of us know what that is like. Um, the hardest part about being a singer is that we are working with an instrument that is our body and our body is what? Pretty unpredictable, right? Every day it changes. It's either happy one day, sad the other day. For women, we're cramping one day, we're bloated the next day. Our chords are the same way. If you're coughing or you're sick, you're gonna end up with issues as well. So we're gonna kind of address those in our lesson today. And so without that, without further ado, we're gonna go. So Tiana, yeah, so tell me yes. what is up? What's been going on? And then we'll just go from there. Yeah, so about three weeks ago, I, I a little sore throat and then it just kind of progressed from there. So tonsils got really swollen. It felt like my throat was on fire. Um, it actually like kept me up. There was really no relief from that. And so it just kind of progressed, progressed, progressed. And you know, now it's, it's gotten better, but there's still, you know, some residual uh, dryness. Like if mm -hmm. I breathe in um, and it just hits too much air because the throat's still kind of raw, mm. it can actually like, induce this like choking, gagging cough. Okay. <laughs> so, Which is not good if you're on stage performing. Not good, okay. and it happens randomly, and it, it's happened in the most awkward of places. I was in the self-checkout line at, at Sprouts the other day, and it was just, and I, the thing wasn't working, and so I had to call someone over, and I just, right there in the middle of the store, and it's, it, you know, in the times of COVID, it's a little uh, yeah. anxiety-inducing because then people think that you're sick or contagious, and then they're looking at you like there's something wrong, but it literally causes me to, like, gag cough. And so it's been really intense and unpredictable. Okay. And so there's still some residual um, just, you know, hoarseness and dryness. Okay, so um, question, what have you done proactively at home for your voice that was helping? Well, resting it. Okay, um, that's one. Yeah, I, that's and, and that's for a vocalist and someone who really gets a lot of enjoyment and pleasure out of singing, just mm -hmm. in the car, in the shower. That was really difficult. Um, and there were probably times where I was like, I'm going to sing anyways, but very softly just to mm -hmm. sing. Um, but and let's I, just sidebar for a second. Yeah. If you are feeling sick and you are going to sing, it is better not to do it in a whispery voice. I will explain a little bit more later. But it's because, well, I'll explain now, actually. What am I saying? Here's Penelope. <laughs> Hi, Penelope. Um, she's actually a model of, look, my size, which is great. Um, if you um, want to take a look at this, I guess I can, you know, zoom in for a second. Um, you have your vocal folds right here, right? And your tongue and your teeth and your soft palate. We're, we'll be visiting Penelope a lot more often. Um, your vocal folds, they lie right over your windpipe. Right? So what is coming through them to make them phony um, is, is obviously air, correct? And then they close. Yeah. But here's the deal. If you're sick, they're going to be inflamed and they're probably not going to be very happy. They're not going to want to close the way that they typically would close. Now, uh -huh. if you wanted to try to sing on top of this with inflamed vocal cords, if you are singing in a breathy voice, that is more air. More air equals probably more irritation. Because if your eyeball was hurting you, would you stand over a, a fan and be like, I'm standing over wind, a wind tunnel, my eyeball is dry. It's gonna do the same exact thing that it would do to your eyes wearing contacts, a windy thing, right? Wind on your cords too much is gonna make them dry out and most likely itchy, and then you're gonna have this um, instinct to cough. So that's probably yes. what you were dealing with there. So when I was trying to sing softly, it wasn't breathy. I was making sure to kind of focus more up here. Bravo. Yes. I learned that from you. The lessons are working. <laughs> the okay, lessons good. are working. Um, but, all, but really what I did mostly was just try to rest my vocal cords, stay hydrated. I did buy some, like, some cough drops and th some good. herbal throat sprays. But really at the end of the day, it's, you just have to rest. Your vocal cords. You, you just have to rest. And here's, yeah. here's the thing that most people, it's actually a misconception. A lot of people think that, oh, my throat is sore. I'm going to drink throat code. It's going to help my voice. And right. I'm like, sure, but you do realize yeah. that Penelope will show us that we have two. We have our esophagus, which goes behind the vocal folds. And then we have our windpipe, which is in front of it. 
So I have a question for you. If you drink something, what happens if it goes down here on your vocal folds? You're going to choke. So unless you're choking, it's not going to touch your cords. And most people don't know that. I didn't know that for a long time, obviously, until I started yeah. studying. So um, she said that she was hydrating. Hydrating is the only other thing. There are two things, actually, that can get hydration on your cords. The first thing would be to obviously drink water. Now, I'm going to say not just water. I would suggest to drink electrolytes because if you drink too much water without salt in it, you're probably going to dehydrate your body, mm -hmm. um, and that doesn't help either. <laughs> then you'll feel it's dry as well. Right. So put some electrolytes in that water, and you're only as hydrated as you were yesterday. You have to remember that. You can't think that you're going to do it um, today, and then it's going to work an hour from now. Um, your body takes time to like absorb the water and to get the mucosal membranes to want to function and make a little more mucus that lubricate your vocal folds. The other thing that you could do, which I have, which I probably should have brought today, is actually a nebulizer. A nebulizer. I do have that. You do? Yeah, I did, that as, I did do that as well. So what we're talking about is a nebulizer. A nebulizer is interesting because you know how a lot of people say when you're sick, you want to put your head over a big, a big like um, pot. They'll say put some Vicks vapor rub in it and stick your face over it. First of all, I'm not big fan on the vapor rub because it's got petroleum in it, and it also has menthol, which is a drying agent. So unless you have mucus and too much of it, you don't want to be doing that. It will probably dry out your cords. So if you have a dry cough, like I did when I had COVID, I had a, mm -hmm. a dry cough. Yes, a dry cough. I was taking my nebulizer. So what a nebulizer is is different than a facial steamer. A facial steamer just makes the water particles go obviously steam into your face, but the particles are too big to actually make it all the way down to your vocal folds. But a nebulizer is different, and you can actually buy them. The one that I have, um, and I, they're not paying me for this, the one that I have is called Vocal Mist, and it's pretty awesome. Um, I know that there are a lot of other ones on the market too, I haven't tried those, but it's great. So um, you would just take it and you put saline solution into the top of it, and you steam, basically, what it does is it microparticleizes the water droplets. So it makes them so small that they actually make their way to your vocal folds. And the interesting thing with that is when I did have COVID and I was hacking up, and I, as a singer, the worst thing you can ever do is actually cough. Right. At least for me, I'm like, do not do it. Do not cough. Because yeah. coughing is literally taking your poor little vocal folds that want to just do this and bashing yeah. them together. That's what it felt like. Repeatedly. <laughs> and then if you repeatedly bash them together, you're going to get irritation, and then you're gonna get swelling, and then it's just this whole like downward spiral. So I always tell my students, do everything in your power not to have terrible coughing fits. And if you have a cough, stay on top of that. So I do suggest everybody get, like what she has and I have is a, a nebulizer, and you can put some of that saline solution in there. Again, it's not water, it's saline solution and nebulize. As soon as that cough starts coming on, I had it in my pocket, on my purse, and I'm just gonna, like stick it on my face. And it would, it would stop So it's a, a mobile one you can Yeah, use? a mobile one. Oh, and it would stop me from like having a full on like yeah. coughing attack, which is great. So she did everything right, which is great. Hydrating and nebulizer. Yeah. Now, if you wanted to get fancy, yeah, she had lozenges, but that's different if your throat was like That was tired. just for immediate relief of to try and avoid the gagging, coughing thing exactly. that would happen. That was just a, like, a, oh, I feel this coming on. Let me just pop this real quick and yeah. help to alleviate some of that. Because you are swallowing, and swallowing does assist in everything kind of getting moving and getting all the yeah. know, mucus moving and stuff like that. It just depends on where you are at. Yeah. Being a singer, most people don't know this. It has to do with actually mitigating the balance between your body's like water. So it's really um, mucus. Mucus is the number one thing that we need to figure out um, and get on top of. Well, um, yeah, um, that's how thick yeah. it is and how thin it is. And depending on that, it's gonna be on your vocal folds and either help you or hurt you. And it's just, everybody's different. Some people wanna drink a, a Diet Coke. Some people wanna drink, I mean, I used to do a show and I would have literally a water, an orange juice and a milk backstage and I know that sounds like cray cray because now I'm dairy free but yeah. uh but I would do depending on where my mucus was at and like if I felt like where my body was at I would have a sip of milk to get a little thicker mucus mm -hmm. or orange juice would have a different reaction in my mouth um and this is before I understood that I was doing something that actually made sense just to help support my body in that in that way um and citrus gives me a little bit of 
mucus. Yeah, and actually. it just depends. And I, I would have to say, like, for all of you out there, you have to, like, singing is the game of figuring out who you are. I can't tell people this enough. And that is why um, people have lots of suggestions, and that's awesome. Take those suggestions and always ask yourself, is this true for me? Just because it's true for someone else does not mean it is true for you. So a lot of our, our job is to experiment and to understand our body and how it functions so that we can do what we need to do to support our body, which is our instrument, to function when we are performing, to do exactly what we want it to do and not throw us any like curveballs, basically. Um, so yeah. without, with that being said, without further ado, <laughs> what we're going to do now is we're going to vocalize. <clears throat> Let's vocalize and just see where you're at. Okay. So I like to say this. So like every day people, um, w when I used to come to voice lessons, I feel like a lot of the times there was a lot of mindless singing and I feel like mindless singing did nothing for me. I didn't get better as a singer. Sure, I was just like vocalizing, but if I didn't know the why and if I wasn't doing it purposefully, I wasn't actually improving. So you'll find that if you, you spend more time being mindful of what you're doing, you're going to get ahead a lot faster because you need to think, huh, where am I feeling this? Where's this buzzing? What, what is going on here? So what we're going to do with Tiana is her check-in. So from now on, you're going to think about singing as yoga. If you were to go into yoga class and you were to go do a downward dog or a plank and you were like cursing at yourself, they would look at you and think, who's the crazy person in yoga? <laughs> who's this crazy person? Why yeah. are they screaming at themselves? It's about just doing a check-in and saying, okay, where's my body at today? And then figuring out where you feel stuck. And then once you figure out where you're stuck, you can move on from there. But in singing, if you push through where you feel stuck, you're gonna end up with bad habits. And then you're gonna find yourself exhausted and probably making your chords inflamed or something else is gonna go out of alignment and you don't want that. That's why I feel like singing is the most fabulously vain thing one can do <laughs> because it's just about loving yourself and listening to yourself so okay so now what we're going to do is uh lip bubbles it could be a it could be a it could be a zzz, um and we are going to do that right now with tiana she's just going to check in with herself and you're going to watch and then you can see if it's true for you and it makes sense for you so let's just start so first we're going to yawn let's just go Oh. oh! One more time. We're gonna do it one more time. Okay. Oh. And the reason we want to yawn is because at the top of each lesson, I like to do it. We want to know, hello, soft palate. Soft palate is exactly. Sorry, I know it's so much. We have to onboard people. You got so much information you need to know. The soft palate is. This is your hard palate right here. It's the roof of your mouth. With your tongue, you can feel it. It's the bony part. When you yawn and something goes up, this little punching bag thing in the back is called your uvula. It's a very lovely word, actually. Um, uvula. So your uvula is going to raise along with your soft palate. And so when we are singing in our head voice and when we want to sing high notes, we're going to want our soft palate to raise. It's probably naturally going to do that, but if it doesn't, then you're in trouble. You're not going to get to those high notes anyways. So that's why we yawn first. and then make a siren just to touch base with where am I today because there are some days where I'm husky and I'm like mm, okay we have no high end well yeah. that's what I'm working with today so let's yawn do it three times in a row okay yawn just close your eyes first get your body <laughs> okay just get in your body <sighs> good now <clears throat> get in your body and feel like the energy is going to go this way up and over okay okay Okay, no, There's a lot of coarseness there and a lot it. of raspiness okay. going on. But yeah. That's okay. That's mindful. So <coughs> your hands. See, now she's coughing. Okay. So there's still a lot of residual like mucus. But that's still. good yeah. because we're going to figure out together. Yeah. So take your hands and you're going to soothe your brain, as weird as it is. I do a lot of things with your hands because um, singing is the art of trying to f get your brain to do what you want it to do on command, which is difficult to just think. But if you can tell your hands to do it, your brain can follow. So you're going to go like this. It may seem silly doing it at home, but trust me, trust me. Yeah. It works. It okay, does. here we go. Ah! 
it actually works. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, the whole point is, is we're trying to hack our human bodies, and, mm -hmm. it, and it works. So this is a good hack. <clears throat> Get your body involved. It's just not in your brain and standing like that. It's not going to serve anybody. Good. Do it one more time and do that. And just be very grounded in your body and relax. Here we go. <laughs> Good. Okay. Now you can go. Here we go. And just let it... Wait, what are we doing? <laughs> Octave. Okay, so we're going to do octaves. So gonna... Okay. Okay. Good. And for you, either do in a circle to think, because what we're okay. trying to do is we're trying to calm our nervous system without realizing it. So you're basically training your body to follow, relax. You know how if, if we're stressed out, we're like, hey, bro, just relax. Mm -hmm. Why do we do that? Why does everybody go, okay, relax? Why do we all action that with our hands? Does that make sense? Yeah. Right? Because it's, it's innate, something we already do. So you're just going to think either in a circle or in a line. I just want to see some sort of connectiveness with your hands and your body. Okay. And your soft palate. <laughs> okay, right there. Good. So now that we're getting here, instead of thinking that the energy is coming from down here, because we're going to ground, if we're grounded too much here, we're, we're using more air than we want to be using. Um, so we're going to think that the note's going to start here. So if you start okay. your hand here, so you just think it starts here, in circles around your head, you'll have less basal tones, and it okay. won't pull you into the swamp. <laughs> <laughs> heaviness. Do you mm -hmm. hear that? Yeah. Do the opposite. When you feel heaviness for this exercise, do the opposite. It's not about sound. It's not about volume. It's about noticing where is the buzzing happening. Can we switch to the Yeah, yeah. Or okay. the, yeah. You can that switch to the generally a little bit easier as you're it gets right, higher. You're right. So do the because an helps more for her. Um, but what you're going to think is that it's higher in your face. So instead of thinking that it's heavy and loud sound, which would be or that's like very laborious. <laughs> Sorry, this is our burning joke. It's too much labor. This is like no point. You're just vocalizing for crying out loud. So yeah. you want to think lighter, lighter, lighter is better. Lighter and connected is always better. So I'd like to think that the note on the bottom is actually starting higher in my face. Or feel like something is resisting you, you're not just like skipping over it. Okay. It's really about just being like, oh wait, okay, my arm is stuck right there. Well, and my pattern is to want to rush through stuff. Yeah. Because it starts to get uncomfortable. <laughs> yes. I know, isn't that interesting? Yeah. yeah. But I feel like, yeah, the, the most challenging thing is to be present, mm -hmm. to be in your body, to not be perfect. Right. And to just see what happens. You mean I can't be perfect? I know, it's so <laughs> terrible. And to surrender. I feel like surrendering is like the hardest thing in the world. Yes. There we go. So surrender to the sound. <clears throat> or. Take a second 
just shake out. Yeah, <laughs> it's getting kind of tight. Am I right? So when your body starts getting tight, you have to let it go. That's why people don't <clears throat> understand. Like, singing is a friggin' it's a sport. It's like, um, yeah, you're an a we're athletes, right? So it's a there is tension. It's a journey. <laughs> um, just like gymnasts, you know, if your if your hips were tight or, you know, you just have to like notice where the tightness happens, and then take the time to allow yourself to like let that go and then pick up where you left off. Most people in life are just forcing everything through and yeah. no, nobody benefits from that like in the long run. You know, forcing it through may be nice at the moment, but it's not a long-term uh, solution for sure. Yeah. Where were we? That's where we were, okay. Okay, just and now think this. You're gonna distract your brain and just go. <laughs> so okay. like circle your brain, I'm not gonna let it go, and flip. So um, the reason that I do these wacky things is because you're literally trying to distract yourself from making uh, tension in your body. And it's harder to make tension in your body when you're like, I'm loose. I'm loose. I'm letting it go. And then it's, then then, then the note is going behind my head. Like it's, your thoughts are only captivated by the idea of like letting it go and going behind your head as opposed to, oh my gosh, is that note going to happen? And then it's, and then it becomes tight and tightness happens to just literally with one moment of one thought. Yeah. So singing is the art of uh, brain control, learning how to control your thoughts and everything follows. Here we go. That was easier. That was better. Yeah. A do bit. it again. Do it again. Just distract yourself. Here you go. That, oh yeah. yeah, I gotta wait. <laughs> right here. Again. We're in whistle tones. We're in like above the magic flute note right now. So like for somebody who's husky and was not feeling well, I mean that's still pretty amazing. Tiana typically gets up to like an A or, or a B up there, higher than I get. Um, but that's great. So it means that you're not as inflamed as you could be. Yeah. Because if you're more inflamed, you definitely wouldn't even get that high. Oh my gosh. Itchy nose. Yeah. From the, I get itchy from the. Yeah. It's a lot of vibrating. And I was like, wow, vibrating. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Good, and I want you to feel like your soft palate goes up and you're making more vertical space in there. So okay. it's not so you feel very you're gonna feel very vertical inside of your mouth. And what I mean by that is that the shape of your mouth changes the tuning of your instrument. If it's like this, I can't even get over that. Well <laughs> I haven't been to it either. I can't sing up there where she is. Um, but the more vertical your mouth becomes, your soft palate raises, and it's going to make a lot more uh, space for that note and make it a lot easier. It's just about being easy. Easy, easy, easy. We want solutions. So you're doing two octaves. Well. That's impressive. So start here. I don't, I don't even know what I'm doing. <laughs> there you go. Okay. Oh man, I can't make it. Can't. There you go.
The lower we go, it's going to change. We're going to start thinking that the notes are actually higher in your face, just like it was for the super high notes. Because the lower you go, if you start to think that it's down here, you're going to end up grabbing. It just, <laughs> yeah. So you have to think instead of instead of it being like heavy and fat, it's going to be light, like a little mouse or a boy soprano. Instead of. One is more on the vocal cords and heavy, and the other one is like a lifted sound, more like you're singing in your head voice in the basement. So think of that more. Okay. I've noticed with sopranos, or at least me, I get trashed vocally by singing heavy in the basement. Yeah. It takes all a my high notes, and it steals them, and it steals my high notes from me. Yeah. Um, so just. Challenging down there. Is it? Yeah. So make it look, make it lighter. Oh, we got a lot of motorcycles. tough down there. It is tough yeah. down there. And that's fine. We don't have to do any low. I mean, that's a low. That's stupid low. <laughs> I think it is. So, um, so now that we've finished the lip burbles or whatever people want to call it, you, lip bubbles, like something very chill. That's also great if you're sick because it is not very taxing on your cords and you can check in to see what's working, what's not, and also know what you should and should not be doing. The mark of actually a professional singer and a good singer um, we still go through the same issues that all people who are quote unquote not singers go through, um, but we still have to go to work. Yeah. And we just have to make better choices. So, a professional, let's say if I went to work and I knew my voice was not working for that note, I would be like, mm, okay, that's, that note is not going to be belted so loudly. It's going to be mixed a little light, lighter. And I would alter the tone in the way that I approached the note. So, it, it was still like appropriate to the material that I was singing in the song and telling the story but not sending my body into a full-on coughing fit on stage or, you know, yeah. or breaking and my voice breaking. Um, we do not want that. And I like to think of breaking as autocorrect, actually. It's your body telling you, no, 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 no. We want to come out of your face in a different place, not where you're trying to have it come out. That's why it flips into your head tone. It's like it wants to come out out here. That was uh, a really great shift for me when you said it? that a break or a crack Yes. Is your body trying to find the place where that sound needs to actually come from? I, that shifted my whole perspective on cracking. That makes me so happy. <laughs> I feel yeah. like um, the number one question I get or the, the number one fear that I have from like most students is like they're petrified of cracking. And um, singing is an interesting game. It's being in relationship with yourself mm -hmm. and changing and altering the relationship that you have with cracking is of the utmost importance. So from now on, I'm going to share with them. I want you to think of cracking as your body auto-correcting what you're doing. If you're pushing a note out, and we are singers, this piano goes like this, right? But as singers, our piano goes like this. So the higher the note is, the higher your body is going to ask for it to come out of your face. It wants to come, up out, come out up here if it's higher, right? But oftentimes, we don't know, you know, the notes on the page, we're just singing it our body is going to autocorrect and tell us, if you're trying to push a note that needs to come out right here, out here, it's going to go, ah, it's going to flip. But for good reason. Your soft palate is flat the entire time. Ah, and then if you keep it flat, it's going to flip when the soft palate pops up. It's just going to flip. Um, but uh, when that does happen to you in your daily life or if you're practicing a song, I want you to do it several times, allow it to flip, and then notice, oh, that's interesting. Huh, 
it wants to come out like right here and then identify like is it closer to my eyeballs that that note wants to come out? Is it closer to my eyebrows? Is it on my forehead? Um, is it my cheekbones? And with that, you're basically getting body awareness. Without body awareness, it's kind of like, at least for me, it was like singing in the dark. I had uh, two different schools of teachers and some of them were like, no, don't think at all about where the note is coming out. And for me personally, because I'm more of an analytical, analytical human being, I really needed the information it did not mm -hmm. serve me at all. It really made me thoroughly confused and mindless. And mindlessness was just keeping me trapped in a state of terrible singing and feeling lost. And mm -hmm. then when I did do something right, they're like, yeah, that. But then they would move on and I'd have no clue what I did right. So when you do do something right and your body flips and it wants to auto adjust or auto correct, take note of that and say, thank you, buddy, that's amazing. And then just make sure that you make a mental note. That's where that note needs to come out in that song. I got to head that direction. And then, there, problem solved. Yeah, it was good for you, though. I know, because you stopped having a bad like conversation with yourself <laughs> yes, about this. Yes. Yes. Mm. It quieted the inner critic a yes. bit. Yeah. Which I think is the hardest part about things. It's the hard mm. part about life. <laughs> True. <laughs> Quieting that, that like inner critic. Voice lessons, life lessons. Yeah. <laughs> OK, so what do we do? We're just saying, hmm. Okay. heavier and then was like, mm, was like mm. and kind of backed up and was doing a little less mm. good um, for this exercise just so you know your tongue is touching the back of your teeth and your um, soft palate is yawning up but the back of your tongue is touching the back of your throat where your uvula is in your um, throat so that no air is coming out of your mouth only coming out of your nostrils so it so sounds to, nasally yeah, yeah exactly it does sound nasally but it's we're just learning about <clears> air <throat> Um, when you're singing, um, if you want to do this at home, say, mm -mm 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 -mm. notice I can't make the sound if I plug my nose. I swear I'm a child. But this is why I love my job. I get to be silly and just like love life every day. And I really hope that more people will sing in the world. I feel like the world would be like such a better place if people could just like stop being crazy and stop obsessing about things that are wrong about and them and just be silly and sing. It is like so simple. Or take some time out for right? Yes. Yes. Amen. Amen. Okay, so she she was doing great. So mm, this is where we were. Here we go. Good, I can see it's coming on your eyeballs. Do you notice how her eyes got bigger? Do it again. <laughs> You're so crazy. <laughs> down in yeah. a second. Okay. Thinner and 
smaller. We, the higher the note is, the less <clears throat> air it requires. The more energy it will require, but the less air. So yeah. it's going to feel like it gets thinner and it gets kind of small through this bottleneck, and you might end up opening up above that. But when you feel like resistance, listen to your body and say, hmm, I'm feeling resistance. I wonder why. And make it a little smaller. You're good. Okay. Mm -hmm. She's been sick and she's getting to a D and that's actually really not very easy. Okay. So why don't we just do <clears throat> oh. So we'll do oh. Oh, the French lady. This is the French lady. So I like the oh because um, <clears throat> oh uses a lot less air. And a lot of things that I notice is that most of us are going through life using too much air. And too much air is blasting our poor little cords apart and making it difficult. And then the muscles jump in and they're like, push, push. <laughs> and they're like, right? So it's like, there's just so much happening. So if we can just learn how to make it more effortless when we're singing air wise, we're going to do a lot better. So the French, oh, notice that you're going to say, say, oh, 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 wow. oh, oh, so oh, 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 right? It's going to oh. feel like it's exactly right, right behind your cheekbones mm -hmm. and it's still going to resonate, but it's not nasally because a nasally sound is like Miranda sings. So it's like, mm, that's different because then you're singing through your nose. But the French actually um, sing, they speak as if uh, le poisson, you actually close your nose off. So air is not coming out of your nose. Interesting. So the mm. other one with NG was closing off our throat, mm -hmm. and this one is closing off our nose a little more. So just keep that in mind. Here we go. <laughs> and pretend to be as fresh as you can be. <laughs> and have fun. Just kidding, wait. The sillier, the better. The sillier, the better. If you take yourself too seriously, I swear, yeah. singing's not going to be fun. And people become better singers by literally making fun of sounds. Like, that's how you become good. Yeah. Because, you know, five-year-old kids, they don't care how silly they are. And then yeah. they can become really great. Yeah. Because they're just silly. So here we go. Whatever. <laughs> here we go. Maybe start the note closer to where your eyeballs are, or okay. feel it coming out there. Okay. Oh. So you have less to travel. Oh. 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 Don't get a bad attitude about yourself. Just be like, mm, okay, trying it. <laughs> oh, 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 wow, oh, <laughs> wow, oh. Oh. So no, hello, I'm Lady Bridgerton. <laughs> so it's gonna feel like that, okay? okay. So beautiful. Hello. Here we go. Oh. No, it's getting kind of dry and okay. scratchy. Have a sip. A little bit. Let me get some water. Even though it's not going to touch your cords, swallowing yeah. some water is going to assist in actually getting your cords to like rub together for the mucosal <laughs> membranes to wake up a little bit more. Oh, well, yeah. <clears throat> wakey, 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 wakey. <laughs> okay. I think it's getting a little dry. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> so, oh, 
feeling of air. It's very technical. Holding, holding backness of air. You're going to get what you get. Sorry. I'm weird. Um, but it's that, that is the same feeling that you're going to have. Oh, 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 oh. It's like backwards feeling. Air is not going to feel like it does this as much as it feels like it's doing this. Okay. And staying inside of you. Oh, oh. Psych your brain out of it. Okay. Oh. <laughs> so the hands really work, guys. The hands really work. There we go. Actually, one of those things that actually really does work, and uh, just, there's a physiological reason for it. But you know, we'll have to get it. We can't. There's so much that I need to tell the world. This is the problem. It's like, how do I tell them everything at once? Yeah, um, you know. Here we go. Just think. And then, so when you go to the high note, just think chicken wings and clench your butt cheeks. Okay. And then. It's gonna pull flat it out of alignment. Sure. Uh huh. It'll pull yeah. the tone flat. You need that the soft palate to like. You just need that column to happen in order to get that overtone. Okay. Here we go. Jerk. I'm like making her sing in the stratosphere, and she came and sang. She felt sick today, and we're singing high C's. So I apologize in advance. <laughs> like, okay, I'm actually impressed with what my voice can do right now, but it's still, you know. <laughs> yeah, but I think that that's the thing that a lot of people don't understand. Like, we like to set our own <clears throat> limitations for ourselves in our heads. Like, when we know something, we're like, mm, I can't do it because it's just not gonna work because I'm sick today, and blah, blah, blah. And then if you just take it baby steps, like, baby step to vocalize. <laughs> paying attention to this, then stretching these things, and then, then you'll sort of be like, oh, my body's actually cooperating. It's actually okay. You know, yeah. you had to go to work and do a show. You're like, great, I don't have to call out and have my uh, understudy go on, you know? Yeah. You know, yeah. it's really about knowing that, knowing where your body's at, so. Bravo to you, though. <laughs> Here you go. Last one. So now, instead of <clears throat> all, you can do an ah if you want. <laughs> you can do a big ah if you want now. We're going to head down. Here we go. 
Do that again. What needed to open up for you to have that happen? So the whole mouth mm -hmm. needs to be more wider, but mm -hmm. the sound is coming up here, really. Out of your cheekbones more. Your, this okay. area right here. Good. I always ask my students because <clears throat> every human is so different. So for me to impose my knowingness of my body onto her doesn't make any sense to me at all. So it's always about asking, where do you find this? Where, is, where are you observing this? And then I can get to know her as a student and then remind her, like, oh, no, Jonah, think here. And then she's going to be able to do it quickly on command. So it's just about us, like, you know, those baseball people, whatever, yeah. <laughs> whatever those hand signs are, it's like kind of the same thing. <laughs> here we go. So opera. Here we go, opera okay. lady. Wait, what are you? Oh. <laughs> here we go. Okay, you do it first. <laughs> Follow. No, it's okay. Okay, and. And just go with your full body. You're like, I got it. Here we go. Good. The more energy you put towards it, the more support emotionally you have, and the less air, which is odd, right? Yeah. It works. Here we go. Okay. We're heading down. on the beginning which sorry I'm not supposed to <laughs> I know we don't want to add H's in the beginning because when you say what happens air the air mm -hmm. it's coming out and we don't want to start your tone with it takes more energy to get those chords to actually want to meet when you're blowing wind you know through them but if you oh 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 that's your chords coming together oh so sometimes it helps to have more of a glottal in that sense that's why I have you going oh you're getting your chords to meet and then just popping off okay. of that. <clears throat> um, we have to quickly wine up because, okay, so <laughs> we have to wine up now. So um, I like to do kind of operatic stuff, easy breezy stuff, get to know your body and G stuff, um, and then some old French vowels to kind of hone the air and get your soprano working. And then we need to get our whiny voice working. The reason that we want our whiny voice to work is the higher notes nowadays, everybody, everybody, everybody wants us to belt these high notes. And um, the only way to get there is actually to wind them. Whining is not nasal. Okay, whining is not nasal. Nasal is this. Whining is like that! Oh my god! Ah! But look at how high I can get. So if I was to sing a note, so if I was to just go, um, I'll go from opera to wine, okay? gravity is actually higher than that um, but you you get the picture um, a lot of the times we are um, singing in a healthy voice in more of an operatic tone with a really whiny um, placement and that's why you're getting the result you're hearing so a lot of people get really confused about belting and they think that they're hearing somebody yelling and belting mm -hmm. is not what it used to be it used to be like Ethel Merman which is like yelling um, she, she had an amazing voice but I, I Cannot, I could not do that eight shows a week. Now we do something called mixing, which I'll have to, we need a whole other video, on that. video for that. <laughs> um, mixing. So <clears throat> the whiny exercises really helps us figure out what does my mix feel like. Um, it's not something you're going to use all the time to sing with, but it's going to help you figure out with your body how to focus the tone and have less air. Because the opposite of a, a breathy tone, breathy tone. Is a whiny tone like that? Our 
if you wanted to be a voiceover artist, it's going to really help you to do these things because <laughs> you can do anything if you know how to work your voice, right? Uh, maybe that's why I get so much work when I do is because is that Barbie I, voice? No, that's not Barbie. <laughs> Barbie has other voices. <laughs> like, can I do this in this video? I don't think I can. Oh. Um, it's all good. I mean, yeah. Who knows? <clears throat> um, yeah, but all those Mattel voices are, you know, a lot of them are like that, and it's like little, right? Uh, but it helps. But that's what I also end up singing in and belting in, and that's going to assist, you know, also to me to keep my voice. So I'm like, eight shows a week, sure, I'll do that. Yeah. I'm like, not going to lose my voice. No, thank you. <laughs> You're not paying me enough. <laughs> um, okay, so we're just going to do wah. So it's going to not sound pretty, but just pay. But yeah. play with me. It's going to go wah. Or you pretend like you're from New York City. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. You were so crazy. <laughs> you were so crazy. Oh, my gosh. April is so crazy. <laughs> Obviously, she's not sounding as pharyngeal as I am because I'm squeezing my like, pharyngeal voice. Um, yeah. She's a little more speech level, but that's okay. I just want her to start to get towards that. I'll do like super extreme so that hopefully the student lands somewhere like somewhere in between. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that it actually shifted yeah. a little bit and you didn't have yeah so yeah basically it's, when you open up the aperture of the note it's, it's kind of like a camera lens too for people who are photographers like it's like how much light do you let into your camera like if you mm -hmm. if it's open a lot actually yeah, it depends on the time and we won't get into that that's too complicated <laughs> <laughs> but you have to think about mm. maybe it being a laser light pen so if I had a laser light it would be like small and bright and just piercingly bright and small if I had a giant flashlight or floodlight, it would be big and diffused on the end, edges, right? So we want it to just be very focused. So we're teaching our brain, like, where's the, the pitch on that focused tone? Focused tones carry louder over spaces. So if I was in a bar <laughs> and I had to say, come over here, come over here, that wouldn't be heard. I have to be like, come over here! Like, I'm, I'm using very little energy to even have that happen. Okay. These are quick ones to get 
get vocalized. I mean, there are times that literally somebody calls you up to karaoke. I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm not vocalized. <laughs> <laughs> then, ah, okay, here I go. Okay, <laughs> it's just figuring out how much air and where your body's at. Um, <clears throat> we are going to jump into you singing a song for a little bit. So I am trying to simplify your life as much as possible to make it so that you're not, you know, running all over the place. Thank you, YouTube, for existing. So the easiest way to practice songs, as you probably figured out, is find the track on YouTube. So I'm just going to pull it up on YouTube. She's going to tell me <clears> what it is. She's going to sing it, and we're just going to work on the song for a couple minutes because um, we did a lot of technical stuff today. Um, what is the name of the song? Coat of Many Colors. Coat I think of I know Many the words, but. Colors. Okay, okay. And I'll let you actually find it while I tell them something. Okay. Um, so what I found interesting is this. For many years, obviously, I've had lots of amazing voice teachers, some of which were uh, pianists, some of which uh, that weren't. But I realized, actually, during one of my lessons, it was a while back, um, I was, you know, bringing sheet music to my uh, voice teacher, and there, I, I needed obviously a voice lesson, and there, there were, there was a lot to, to look at in the sheet music, and instead of watching me, um, they were just trying to play the music, and then I had this epiphany of like, oh my gosh, you know, they're trying to do too many things at once, and they can't actually watch me like intently to make sure, uh oh, that's that's what that vowel needs to change. Their throat is doing this, like they can't make like lots of like notes, they were just kind of giving me general notes, um, and to no fault of their own, just that there's a lot to think about when you're trying to like read sheet music. So even for me, when I go to my voice teachers now, um, I prefer to bring in tracks so that I can have them just like, watch me, watch me, and to make sure like every little, like combing through every little aspect of my song so that I know that I'm getting like the most of their attention and the best of them and they're getting the best of me. And so I tend to work with tracks for that reason. <clears throat> Back through the years I go wondering once again Back to the seasons of my youth I recall the box of rags that someone gave us And how my mama put the rags to use There were rags of many colors Every piece was small and I didn't have a coat And it was way down in the fall Mama sold the rags together So on every piece with love She made my coat of many colors That I was so proud of As she sewed, she told a story From the Bible she had read About a coat of many colors Joseph wore and then she said Perhaps this cold will bring you good luck and happiness And I just couldn't wait to wear it And Mama blessed it with a kiss My coat of many colors that my mama made for me Made only from rags Can I just stop for a second? <laughs> Sorry, I know we're recording. So, yeah. The, the, something feels off about that version. I don't know is if it it's too high. Is it the wrong sure. vote version? Can we try the other one? Yeah. But the other one's lower though, right? I know. Um, so here's the deal. So everybody doesn't, um, this is something we should actually um, talk about. Address. Address. Um, <laughs> keys will make and break it yeah. for everybody. Unless you're in a musical where the show and the libretto is written in a certain key, which you need to stick to if you're singing popular music. I highly suggest find the key that feels the best for your voice and sits in your sweet spot. Because, you know, you're not trying to be somebody else, you're trying to be the best version of yourself. And, you know, the process of being a good singer is understanding what is good for you, what is bad for you, what makes you shine, and what does not make you shine. And you don't need to do things outside of your lane if it doesn't make you shine. There's yeah, this just, it didn't feel comfortable it singing So that. it seemed like for her, she <clears throat> wanted the lower key because it was uh, what she'd probably been practicing. So we're going to take another time. I think that was the next video. Right? Yeah, probably. So um, so what I want you to do is say, this is really, since she's doing Dolly Parton and she's doing with an accent, yeah. say, hey, everybody. Say, howdy, everybody. Howdy, everybody. <laughs> Stop yelling at the music a little bit, yeah. too. Yes. Okay. 
good like bad. Hi. Hi. Okay. So. You should also help with the other song. Yeah, that's but, true. Yeah. Back through the years I go wondering once again. Back to the seasons of my youth. I recall the box of rags that someone gave us. And how my mama put the rags to use. There were rags of many colors. Every piece was small. And I didn't have a coat. And it was way down in the fall. Mama sold the rags together. So on every piece with love, she made my coat of many colors that I was so proud of. As she sewed, she told a story from the Bible she had read about a coat of many colors Joseph wore. And then she said, perhaps this coat will bring you good luck and happiness. And I just couldn't wait to wear it. And Mama blessed it with the keys. My coat of many colors that my mama made for me. Made only from rags, but I wore it so proudly. Although we had no money, well, I was rich as I could be. In my coat of many colors, my mama made for me. So with patches of, oh. <laughs> it gets tired. Yeah. So here's the interesting thing. So today, obviously. So what's interesting <laughs> is uh, the number one thing we had to know is find the right key. Wrong key, felt wrong Did for it her. Sound better I had the a lot of time. notes actually when she was singing it through. The others, I was like, mm, we have some uh, vowels to shift, we have placement to shift, and then as soon as we're in the key that she was used to practicing it, practicing it in, I was like, oh okay, so we don't have yeah. so many things up against us. Um, and that was just the difference of a half tone. Okay, so that's a half step difference. Um, I feel like. Obviously, this is not, you're not struggling in this song. I mean, we were working on She Used to Be Money. Yeah, it's not a challenge. Like, hard song. money notes. <clears throat> um, this is just sitting like really easy in, in your voice. Um, I don't have. Do we want to try the other one? I mean, I have another student. Time, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have another student I wanted. Oh, this um, is so uncomfortable to record it? because I'm so, this is such a vulnerable space. Yeah. So to have like. Somebody watching us. Yeah, in somebody in a safe camera. Space. <laughs> No, yeah. it's true. Yeah, but I'm actually proud of myself because I, I wasn't, thank you. I wasn't as like self-conscious, but I was still kind of like, there's a camera here. <laughs> I know. Isn't yeah. it interesting? And I feel yeah. like I'm so grateful to you to do this because yeah. most people wouldn't be brave enough to just say, sure, look at me at all of my like beauty and my flaws and like me working it out. Like, you know, most people yeah. want to show the world like here I am, I'm a finished product as opposed yeah. to okay, I have some really thing, like, things to iron out. But I think like, that's a, it's a great part of your journey, especially yeah, because for yeah. her, she's working a lot on like, inner voices. And if you could do this. and Well, and the perfectionism like, thing, right? Correct. Like having to look perfect for correct. people and sound perfect because you're, if you fear being judged. Of course, you know, we all so, fear yeah. being judged. Yeah. I mean, no, but this you, is fun. You it's probably great. feel being judged, right? But I'm sure watching it, you weren't thinking, oh, I'm going to judge her, that girl. <laughs> right? People don't think that. But what we think is that people are thinking that. And it's yeah. really like... Well, some of them are, let's be real, and that's okay. <laughs> that's okay, some of them are, but they just um, really don't okay. have much else to do. Like, yeah. they're either a shiny, sparkly human who's trying to support other humans to do the best they can in the world, or you're sitting there trying to pick people apart, um, and probably not doing it yourself, because the people that are doing it know how hard it is, and they're like, oh, that's hard, so. Yeah, yeah. You know, kudos to her for doing it. I appreciate you hanging out with us. I appreciate you watching. Um, I love you dearly. I want your voice to shine. I want you to not feel fearful around your voice. And hopefully a little bit in our lesson, we help to dispel some like, you know, beliefs Thanks. that we might have yeah. and myths and things about like vocal health and also about like having a bad head and getting in the bad head space and what that does and maybe some placement things and how your body actually functions. Um, and I look forward to you hanging out with us next time. So, April Molina signing off.